Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A couple of announcements before we begin. First of all, Fern Lindemeyer uh, called to say that uh, she has a new grand daughter, um, and congratulations to in the Daniel Lindemeyer family. Nicole Lindemeyer has a daughter, Willow Ember Lynn, and so congratulations to her and the family. Uh, what a blessing. Also, um, our youth group will have a meeting in the Narthex. So it'll just be to touch base regarding an upcoming uh, event that the youth group has traditionally done, and that's the Easter breakfast. So following our worship service, uh, see Christoph in the narthex and touch base about what needs to be done, and um, that would be greatly appreciated. Many hands make for light work and a wonderful and successful event. A personal note here, but it's also a congregational event. Um, my wife, Mary, um, had an infection working in her foot for the last couple of weeks. And yesterday it just kind of got the best of her and we had to go to the hospital. She's in the hospital. And um, so she'll be included in the prayer, in the prayers today. She's doing well, um, kind of rebounding from, uh, well, you know what it's like when your body gets infected. So, uh, but by the time I left her in the evening, she was feeling much better and uh, hopefully will not be in the hospital long. In light of that, this morning when I went to check my email, I cannot get into my own account. So somewhere, I, and I was checking all that at the hospital, and I wonder if we have a case of um, theft, you know, identity theft. So if you're trying to contact me by um, email, it's going to be a difficult thing for me because I'm just going to figure out how I'm going to get into the me email to uh, meet any messages that come my way. So um, just a personal note in that regard and if you're trying to contact me or I'm trying to pick up, I store a lot of things on, the, on uh, my email account so you know how that goes. We open up our service of, of worship and with this hymn, God himself is present. Let us all adore him. And hear the harps resounding, see the hosts the throne surrounding. Holy, 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 hear the hymns ascending, and angels blending. The your church now raises 
Fount of every blessing, purify my spirit, trusting only in your merit. Like the holy angels worshiping before you, may I ceaselessly adore you. Let your will ever still Will your church terrest you As the host celestial Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. One thing I have heard from the Lord, two things God has spoken to me, that you, O Lord, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. With you, O Lord, there is unfailing love. You reward everyone according to what they have done. We sing the praise of him who died, of him who died upon the cross. So blessed all deride, for this we count the world but love. And the Lord said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness, anything, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or, the, or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those that hate me, but showing steadfast love to the generations of those who, keep, who love me and who keep my commands. Inscribed upon the cross we see In shining letters God is love He bears our sins upon the tree He brings us mercy from above So as we think about this past week, how we have lived our lives, we have erred against one another, and in all things we err against God. For a moment, let's consider our life and the sins of which we confess before God. And we pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and have done what is evil in your sight. I am sorry for my sins, and I repent of them. According to your love and mercy, forgive me all my offenses, those that I know and those of which I am unaware. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, grant forgiveness. Renew a right spirit within me, and restore in me the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The balm of life, the cure of war, the measure and the pledge of love, the sinner's refuge here below, 
the angel seem in heaven above. Please be seated as we hear the epistle reading for this day, our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In writing to the Corinthians, Paul says, For the word of the cross is folly or foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the disturbment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews, Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. It's a stumbling block to the Jews and it's foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than man. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even the things that are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to you. The cross it takes our guilt away, it holds a fainting spirit up, it cheers with hope a gloomy days. And sweetens every bitter cup. Our gospel reading is from St. John, chapter 2. Praise be to you, O Lord. And let us stand in respect to the gospel. To To Christ for one sinner's grace by bitter grief and anguish sore be praised from all the ransom grace forever and forevermore. Well, the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip out of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? 
And Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, it has taken us 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And we invite the young children, the Zion's Children Choir, to come forward at this time. They're singing Jonah. Stay right there. Oh, we got one more song. After this, stick around, and we're just going to have a message and then send you off to Mr. M. Thank you.
and I want to, no, you just, you can stand, that's fine. Well, let's have a seat then, it's fine. Have a seat. First of all, I want to thank you for singing. It was, it adds something to our service, doesn't it? To hear your voices. And I like that first song you sang about Jonah. It, in uh, just a few verses, you explained everything that happened to Jonah. The importance of Jonah. Jonah had to speak the word to the people. He didn't want to do it, and he didn't think that those people he were going to talk to, that they would care either. But God prepared a way, didn't he? God prepared a way for Jonah, and he hit the hearts of the people so that they repented before God. Your second song talked about Palm Sunday, how when Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem, they were waving their palm branches, right? Giving glory to God because he is... He is the Christ. He is the Christ who came to give his life as our Savior. So one, I wanted to thank you for your singing and to remember that your songs bring the message of God in a powerful way. They hit your hearts and the hearts of all the people that you sing to. And they remind us all about the glory of God and the importance of God in our lives. He is our Savior who loves us and cares for us. And that's our sacred time today. Let's have a word of prayer. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the gift of song. And in singing your praises, O Lord, your Holy Spirit is among us and active in us. Bless us, O Lord, as we hear your word, O Lord, and do your will, believing all that you have given in Christ, our Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys, and go back to be with Mr. M. Lord, our God, we give you thanks and praise. Of heavenly joy and earthly peace we sing. But we raise, Lord God Almighty, Father, heavenly King. Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, you bore for us the Lord of this world's sin. O Lamb of God, your glorious victory won, receive our prayers, grant us your peace within. Alone, O Christ, you are, are the Lord, at God's right hand in majesty most high, who with the Spirit worship and adore, with all the heavenly host we glorify. Please be seated. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We practically heard that as we open up our worship today. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We recognize this as a third of God's Ten Commandments, or fourth, depending on how you number those commandments. In this, we realize that God creates us and then guides us into a life that we can enjoy the things of this world and enjoy the God who created all things and who sustains everything by his holy word. We know the basis for observing the holy day that God created all things in heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested from his labors. He did not need to do this, of course. If the Almighty God can create all things in six days, he certainly did not need a day of rest. But this is the way in which God brings about the Sabbath, isn't it? He does not need a day of rest, but he knows that we humans do. Jesus affirms this in his day when he is criticized by the Pharisees at various times and places. They're going to nail him on some sin and they see that the easy target is what Jesus is doing on the Sabbath. But Jesus 
speaks to them that God did not make man for the Sabbath. God created the Sabbath for man. He created the Sabbath for us. As surely as he gave a day of rest to himself, he calls us to observe this day of rest. He calls us to make this day and to see this day as special by giving us a time to reflect on our lives, especially through the lens of his holy word. The creation of the, all of that given by his Holy Spirit. And really, when God does this officially at Mount Sinai, putting on the tablets, the two tablets, uh, Moses brings down to the people, when God establishes a time, he's doing something radical, even in the eyes of all people who desire to worship God. For God has put it into the hearts of people, hasn't he? To see that there's something greater than themselves. And, for instance, when, we're, when we find ourselves being mired in sin, let's say the 12 Steps program, notice that those 12 Steps, first of all, begins with the idea that you give yourself to something greater than, your, than yourself. Well, that's what God is, something greater than ourselves. Specifically, all people yearn for that. But they're lost in regard to what that is. But through God's Holy Spirit, through the scripture, God reveals specifically who he is. And in, in observing the Sabbath, in calling us to observe the Sabbath day, notice what he's doing. He's doing something radically different in the eyes of all religions around. All religions around will say, this is a holy place. This is the holy shrine. This is the holy temple. Come here and worship God, right? All people have this desire to seek a holy place, but they won't find it until they find the God who created all things. And that's what God sets apart as different. He establishes a time in our life, not a place, but a time that is special for us. In the Bible, we encounter Israel at worship, a worship that often took place on the Sabbath. Note, that again, God anchors this in his time, in his way. Because pagan gods revealed themselves in places and through the elements of nature, that's nothing new. It's commonplace. Again, God puts it in our hearts to worship something or someone, somewhere. But the God of Israel is holy, in which we means separated from us. And he is separate, independent of all creation, because he is a creator. And his focus of, for us as humans is to anchor us on this special time, this day set aside to worship. A Jewish scholar named Abram Heschel pointed out when history began, there was only one holiness in the world, in the holiness of time. God creates all things. And we see this even as we move from, from the creation. God gives the account of creation. The six days God creates. And on the seventh, he sets apart as holy. It's a time for us to set apart things that are holy. And really, when we step into this time, God is giving us a value we can't begin to imagine. Because elements in nature are, are one thing, right? But elements of this world can, when elements of this world become our focus, then it really devalues God. And it takes away what God has desired, that we find him where he is to be found. All other gods are false gods. Did you hear in our readings this morning as, as we entered into worship, how God specifically says, do not create for yourselves graven images. Anything that looks like the stars above or things that are on earth or things that are in the sea. No, all these things are part of creation. They're not the creator. God sets our eyes firmly on him from the beginning. God creates all things and establishes that holy day. He creates in us 
a sacred space and a sacred time. God makes all of that. And the creation story then ends really with an observing of the Sabbath. The Ten Commandments explicitly refer to the creation of the Sabbath. It's a link between what God has done in creating all things and what God has done for you in seeing in showing that you yourself are called forward to be holy in his sight. So God leaves a time in our life. Six days to go about all the things in creation. Six days to manage the things of our lives. But the seventh to set apart our lives as holy. God has done this. Why? Because in the same way God has created you to be holy. How? Well, we enter into this world as sinners, right? There is no way that we can come to God. We're spiritually blind, spiritually dead. We're spiritually enemies of God. We can't come to him. And so the world wanders, lost, trying to seek him. But God has established a place in your life, in your heart. What is baptism but that very thing? A cleansing of our lives from our sins. Taken away, this creation of ours is soiled in our sins, soiled in our guilt, soiled in our shame. But is God by the power of his Holy Spirit to cleanse us based on everything that God has done for us through Jesus Christ. God has made you holy in the washing with water through the word. He has created you to be his own. God has created a sacred space within you. What does scripture say after all that, but that you are God's temple of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. It doesn't happen, my friends, unless God has established that in your life, baptizing you, washing you clean of your sins, establishing your heart, your soul as a place where he himself dwells. Isn't that mind-boggling? This too separates ourselves from everything in all of religion. God, in every other religion, God has shown you that you are holy because of Jesus Christ and established in you saving faith. All this is a gift of God, not of our works, lest any of us should boast. And so our being here today is a joining of those two things, isn't it? A remembrance that God has set a special time in our life to break from the things of our week and to establish to sit down with God and hear his word. To be in here, to hear the, the songs of the children, to hear the songs we sing together in faith. God established this sacred space and time in your life. You daily have that in as much as you are at God's temple. And we honor it as we set aside that time to find him in his word and to believe in him, letting the Holy Spirit do his work in our lives. That's what God does in the hearing of the word, in the washing of your lives, in our time together. And this is seen in the gospel, isn't it? Where Jesus comes into Jerusalem, and very nice that they sang about Palm Sunday here, because as soon as Jesus comes into the city, he goes into the temple. And what does he do? He finds that the temple courts are, are, are filled up with animals, the bleeding of sheep and lambs. He sees the money, money tables there. He sees in the courts dedicated to the Gentiles for prayer. He sees commerce going on. And Jesus is incensed. He's angry, and there's nothing wrong with anger. God in the Bible is found to be angry. And on this occasion, Jesus Christ is angry. He is sinless. Jesus is angry because as he calls out, you have taken this house of God and turned it into a den of thieves. Commerce itself isn't bad, of course. We go about our lives dealing in in exchanges of one thing or another, paying our bills and buying this and that, selling this or that, or giving our life in labor in a transaction for money. Money and commerce isn't bad. But God had established this place in the courts of the temple 
specifically for the people of the world, for the court of the Gentiles where were people who were coming to know God through the word, where they could go, even though they weren't Jews. God had established that there was an area, a court for the Gentiles. And what had happened over time? But merchants came in and said, well, we have to accommodate those who come to worship here. Because as they come, especially for the Passover, they can't be coming and bringing their unblemished lambs. They need a place to buy them. The courts of the Gentiles is a perfect place. And so they brought their profane daily lives into the temple courts. Again, in an area that God had reserved for people who were not of the Jews, but people who were coming to know God. And Jesus comes in and he sees it cluttered with commerce. And again, commerce isn't bad, but God had established this place as holy for the Gentiles. And the Jewish merchants brought their deals in, their money so they can exchange a regular currency for temple cash. They had brought the lambs for the convenience of those but of course, probably at inflated pro pro profits. They had taken what was holy, holy space, and made it profane. Holy space, holy time. Jesus is angry. For even as God comes into our lives and find it filled with profane things, even profanity, God is angry. But we repent of our profanity. We repent of the profane things. We repent of the profane things that enter into our lives. We enter into this time of worship. We enter into this sacred moment, confessing our sins to God and hearing from him that we have forgiveness for our sins. Jesus overturns the tables of the merchants and the money changers. He makes a whip and he drives everybody out. You have made this sacred place, a den of thieves. It's Jesus who sets things right. Jesus at this time certainly offended those who were sitting there. And they rise up and ask by what authority Jesus has these things. Well, Jesus has the authority, doesn't he? He does what, what God intends to be done. God establishes all things through Jesus Christ. In fact, as surely as Jesus said, remember that God created the Sabbath for man. He didn't create man for the Sabbath. Jesus enters into our time and space and takes upon himself our sins. And what happens that very week is that these insanely mad and jealous people come to overtake God's son, drive him to the point where he is the one who is evil and profane, and they drive him to the cross. But that's where God sends Jesus. That's where Jesus needs to be, because it's only Jesus who can come down for us and bear our sins. He who was made, as the scripture says, a little lower than the angels regarding his human form is crowned with glory and honor. No, Jesus the very Son of God, God's beloved Son, carries upon himself our sins, and the sins of all who transgress, and carries them all to the cross. God establishes sacred time and space in us by way of his Son, Jesus Christ. It's Jesus on the cross who says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It's Jesus on the cross who says, It's finished. It's done. And every sin is atoned for. Jesus gives us in this special sacred place and time where it seems profane, Jesus on a cross, God is able to bring that which is sacred and holy to us, even to this day, in Jesus' name. Remember what God has done for you. When you hear those words, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Don't let your lives be filled with guilt and shame. Rather, lift yourself up to where God has given you special place and time. Remember that God has created you to be holy. Sin destroys all that. But God erases all that through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, 
that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. God zealously guards what is best for all, forgiveness and eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, let it keep our hearts and minds steadfast in life and love and grant you peace. Amen. Let us stand and sing those last, sing these verses, Lord of all good. <clears throat> Lord of all good, our gifts we bring to thee. Yours am our holy to, to fulfill tokens of love and pledges they may be that our whole life is offered to thy will we give our minds to understand thy ways hands eyes and voice to serve thy great design Heart with the flame of thine own love ablaze Till for thy glory all our powers combine Father whose bounty all creation shows Christ by whose willing sacrifice we live Spirit from whom all life in fullness flows To Thee with grateful hearts ourselves we give O Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank You for this special place and time where we have gathered in the hearing of Your Word and in the giving of praise to Your holy name. Bless us, O Lord, and let us daily seek this sacred space and time, understanding that your Holy Spirit has come down in Jesus Christ and made our lives holy. And let each day, O Lord, be a time when we bring our spiritual sacrifice to you, seeking to do your will in, in our life to your praise and for the good of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As is our custom, O oh Lord, we pray for a portion of our family here at Zion, this week remembering the Beto family, Jacob and Kara and Brooke and Chase, remembering Chris and Jenna Beto and their children, Emma, Olivia, and Ella. Be with these your people, O oh Lord, strengthen and keep them in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, dear Heavenly Father, that you bring blessings into our lives, and we give thanks along with the Lindemeyer family, particularly for Nicole Lindemeyer, upon the, upon the birth of her daughter, Willow. Be with and bless little Willow, and let her grow in wisdom and stature, and as a child belonging to you. In your holy name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to your heavenly Father that you would be with those who lift up their hands to you, seeking, seeking health and healing in your name. This day we remember my wife Mary, Mary Zacharias, and give thanks, O oh Lord, for the, for the medical team that was able to get her life under control. We pray, O oh Lord, bring health and healing to Mary in your time and in your way provide. The same, O oh Lord, our prayer, continued prayer for Tanner Olson and for Ann Traver and for Vicki Carlson and others that we know that you would bring health and healing, O oh Lord. Grant us health and strength according to your will and in every way provide for us. Keeping us strong in the faith, O oh Lord, remembering you are with us always. In Jesus' name, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day and the weather uh, that is upon us, truly uh, record-breaking this winter and this day. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of 
a mild winter and beautiful days. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would continue to bless us with good weather that would favor our land and would cause us to prosper. But in saying that, O Lord, help us to remember that you seek to do the same for us in every way. Grant, O Lord, that we turn our eyes to you, to look to you as the source of every blessing, certainly to return and give thanks to you, but always to call upon your name for every need in adoration and praise, in Jesus' name. And with, with this, O oh Lord, we join combining in the prayer that Christ himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For God, our best and most holy friend, turn our hearts towards your true Son, that we may see in him the same saving love that cleansed the temple courts and then died on the cross for giving enemies. Give us his mind and his spirit that in the midst of the busy commerce of the world, we may discern what should be done and have the faith and the love to undertake it willingly. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and loves with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Savior, again to thy dear name we raise with one accord a parting hymn of praise. Once more we bless thee ere our worship cease, then lowly bending thy word of peace. Grant us thy peace upon our homeward way. With thee began, with thee shall end the day. God, now our lips from sin, our hearts from shame, that in this house have called upon thy name. Grant us thy peace, Lord, through the coming night. Turn thou for us its darkness into light. From harm and danger keep thy children free. For dark and light are both alike to thee. Grant us thy peace, Lord, out our earthly life, our balm in sorrow, and our stay in strife. Then when thy voice shall bid our conflict cease, call us.
us, O Lord, to thine eternal peace.